brutal content warning. What is this? The I didn't get the uh, no shirt memo. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> listen. I've been wearing a guinea tee for every episode of Sopranos you summer. Have been. Yeah. But I also I I know it's hot in New York now. So I'm, is it because of the Sopranos or because it's hot? Uh, no. I mean, I did turn off my AC, but no, I'm wearing this for Sopranos. But you know, it's comfortable. So I mean, I heard it's been like ungodly hot in New York lately. Yeah, that was that was last, last week, week, the week before. Oh, yeah, now week, it's yeah. been good. It's it's actually kind of cool today. Yeah, it's kind of cool here too. I've just been, uh, I worked, I just been hanging out all day without a shirt on. And if I'm being honest, in the episode that we're talking about, uh, there was the scene where Tony's on the bed uh, with the prostitute or whatever, his girl. Uh yeah, and uh, he's shirtless, and I was like, you know what? I'm not getting dressed for this episode. <laughs> you gotta channel that. Got to channel that Tony Soprano. Energy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what better way to do it? Yeah, yeah. What better way to do it, dude. Exactly. Man, now I had. I wish I had a wife beater. I used to wear wife beaters all the time. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think we're supposed to call them that anymore. Yeah, oh. man. <laughs> <laughs> ah, whatever, man. I can't keep up with the liberal. No, agenda. I don't. <laughs> agenda. <laughs> the agenda to not beat your yeah, wives. I'm either going to call them. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're taking everything from us. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm either going to call them wife beaters or guinea teas. So either way, it's going to be offensive. <laughs> I know. I called it a guinea tea, and I was like, wait, is that worse than wife beater? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know either. Undershirt, so but undershirt could really mean multiple things. I good, think. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Dude, I saw. I saw Nope this weekend. Ah, oh, you, I did not. I haven't seen it yet. Still haven't but seen it either. Yeah, wasn't a fan. Wasn't a fan. I've been kind of just taking my time. Tbh. Uh, not that I'm like not interested in seeing it. I just haven't seen it because I've been dumb busy. I had a crazy week of comedy last week. Dude, I did a three-night run with Brittany Carney, which, Anthony, anytime, dude, she's incredible. You should watch her. She's so, go see her like do stand-up at some point. She's a New York comic. Oh, nice. Does she have anything online that I could check out? Not really. She okay. tries to, uh, so like, I'm going to, I don't want to go too much into it, but like her comedy, she's really weird. And I mean that in like the best way. And so she like only puts like tiny little snippets, like a couple of them, you know what I mean? And, but like, dude, uh, she's so, I, she was so cool to open for and I got to show her around West Virginia and she was just a sweetheart. And she's also like, she wrote for that damn Michael Che. Nice. And she's, you know, just had her first comedy central bit recently, but yeah, she's a New York comic and she's sick. That's cool. I definitely want to check her out. Cody, it's crazy. You've been, I want to say brushing shoulders with so many comedians who have had Comedy Central specials. I want you to get your fucking special, yeah, man. Yeah, when's your special coming? Dude, it's next year, baby. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but seriously, no, like realistically, how, I, mean, I mean, speak it, speak it into existence. Yeah. Re- realistically, <laughs> realistically, I'd be thrilled to get like my first even if not a full length special, maybe like, cause comedy centrals uh, in the era of the internet, they've been reco- d- letting people do like 15 minute tapings and stuff like mm. that. And just mm. been like releasing them in clips online and stuff to get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how I've seen a lot of them. I mean, I used to watch comedy central presents all the time and the way it's formatted now is cool, but I, do they have a, like a show you could actually watch on comedy central or it is. I, just- think, they, I think they do, but it's, yeah, I just have. To, I think they, I'm pretty sure they do. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know. That being said, yeah, I think realistically, I'll be there with like a tight. Well, I'll, I, I'm ho- if I could get like, I'm hoping for like within within two years is my goal to be getting my first taping. Because I mean, realistically, I know I started like over a decade ago, but I've only been at it for like four or five years. And a lot of these comedians that I'm brushing shoulders with, well, I'm not saying I'm better than them in any way, but I am really, I I have been networking like an animal and working really hard. And every single one that comes through is like, you're doing something incredible here. Every single one. 
That's that's got to be great to hear. But also, I'm going to edit that last part so you could just say, "I don't think I'm better than them, but I am," and then I'm just going to cut it there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, no. What I was going to say though is, I don't think I'm better, but I'm like, you know, I'm making those connections. And no, stuff. of course, of course, yeah. yeah no, I'm just breaking your balls, man. No, that's <laughs> awesome, dude. But yeah, dude, this week I'm opening up for one of my comedy heroes, and I'm fucking pumped about it. Who's Wait, that? who's that? It'll be Sam Talent. I'm opening up for him. Oh, Sam Talent. Nice. Who's dude, that? He's, dude, he's this uh he's a comedian and like a writer. He's like a published author and shit. He just got his first Comedy Central bit. He's never been like he's always kind of been in the underground. Like he regularly opens up for guys like Kyle Kinane, Tim Dillon, etc. Mm-hmm. But he's like all of those comedians' favorite comedian. Like, Norm MacDonald loved him and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. Nice. And you're opening for him. I'm opening for him twice this week. Good shit, man. (laughs) That's really cool. Yeah. It feels cool. Um, So, you know, that being said, uh, he's a very large man. And you know who else is a very large man? (laughs) (laughs) Funny, I was just I, I was just looking at pictures of him because I'd never seen him before. He's a large guy. Yeah, who's <laughs> <laughs> also a large guy. <laughs> it's true. Yes. Well, this marks episode four of Sopranos Summer, which we're doing on Comics and Chronic because. Nothing says comic books more like David Chase's <laughs> The Sopranos on HBO. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This week's episode, we're talking about season four, episode six, Everybody Hurts. What a banger of an episode. Dude, I loved it. And it's such an arty, buco focused episode. It yeah, is. Yeah, dude, we need that book. <laughs> that that cocky. <laughs> I was gonna say we haven't really talked about how badass the soundtrack for the Sopranos is. Like every episode or most episodes have really great songs. Mm, and yes. this episode I'm assuming is named after the REM song Everybody Hurts, but they don't have that song in the episode. They don't feature it. They don't feature it at all, yeah. No. I, I don't know if it's safe to say that it's named after that song. I'm not sure. Oh, well, 100% is. You think so? Yes. I don't know. For sure. I mean, Does it's just David based Chase on- strike you as an REM fan? Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> uh, he strikes me as a fan of pop culture. And mm, just the way maybe. the title of Everybody Hurts, the songs feel. If you would have played that song while Artie was overdosing, it would have oh, been perfect. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that would have been, yeah. been cool to see. You know, Anthony, you know what to do now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you want me to overdose and play that song? Okay. Yes. I'll <laughs> and, and, and live stream yourself yeah. doing it. <laughs> One and only Comics and Chronic live stream. <laughs> Anthony committing suicide. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, Anthony, at the beginning of the episode, I just need you to edit me saying brutal content warning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's gonna be the thing now. If you if you ever hear Cody say at the beginning of an episode, brutal content warning, you were warned. Yeah, you yeah. know it's gonna be <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> this one Anthony dies. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, th- this is a good episode. I love the relationship between Tony and Artie in it. 
Yeah, yeah. really on, fully on display. Yeah. Fully on. Like, you really see... But, like, also... Uh, Really, just like even though he's not necessarily the star of the show, a really good like deep look into Tony's psyche. Yeah, yeah. I sorry, I don't know if this is jumping way too far ahead, but it's yeah. it's connected to the first scene, and I just realized it while thinking about it. The beginning of the episode starts with Christopher. He's on the couch with Adriana, and they're shooting up. Yeah, and he's like bonking out, and he gets yeah. a call from Tony. Now, I didn't think of it until just now. But with what this episode deals with, what if Tony never called Christopher in that one moment? Christopher could have OD'd at the very beginning of this episode, you know, feasibly, right? He was shooting up. He had he was about to do more. And the whole episode is about how Tony feels the way he feels about the de- the suicide of Gloria Trillo, who he had yeah. an affair with. Oh, know? man. I don't know. I, I, I just thought of that. Like, and, and, and then uh, it, so, what, like, while know? he does, you know, damage to the lives around him, he also is saving people. He saved like, Arnie's you know? life, dude. That's actually, like, one of the cool scenes. You see how empathetic he is. He's with the girl. He's like, wait, wait, wait. Okay, what am I doing? And he's he knows he can't get to Artie in time anyway, so he calls 911 for them to yeah. go to his house. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, dude, like, I don't know. Like, once again, like, he's not a complete monster of a human. No. And they were childhood friends, correct? Yeah, exactly. They're childhood friends. And that's the cool part is their friendship has nothing to do with organized crime. They literally grew up together. Right. Yeah. And so that's why Ralph turns down the money. That's a cool like, scene. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. love when it's like, hate to do it, Artie, but I got to say no. And Artie's like, how come? He's like, because if you don't pay me back, I can't hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Which just goes to show that Artie's basically like a made guy without even He's pretty touching. untouchable. Yeah. yeah. You cannot touch Artie Bugo. Even yeah. though they do I mean the beginning of the first episode they burn down his restaurant. They touch him in they other touch ways. Him to protect him though, because remember Uncle Junior was gonna assassinate somebody at his restaurant. Right, that's right. And they and they saved the reputation. Of the restaurant that way. It down. But Tony knew that he would get the insurance money for it and so that it could just be rebuilt. Right. So like, yeah, yeah, it's shitty what he did, but in a criminal mind, he like knew what he was doing. You know? He saved yeah. the day. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> in yeah. a very sociopathic way, he saved the day. Yeah. He's a hero. <laughs> he's, a hero. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's the hero we need, but not the one we deserve. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He's an American hero in that way, right? He's kind of yeah. like a cowboy. <laughs> Which... Speaking of cowboy, he always is referencing the actor Gary Cooper, yep. who played these strong American archetypes, like such as cowboys. And he even says throughout the show, "Whatever happened to Gary Cooper?" Yeah, yeah. it's his idol. He literally yeah, says it's, it's his idol. It's his idol. Yeah, he like idolizes Gary Cooper. Yeah, the strong, silent type. Yeah, yeah. Dude, Tony, Tony does. Is, yeah, Tony does say. try to do other things too in this episode. Like he hooks up Carmela's nephew with a nice his, suit. Her cousin, her cousin. Her Brian, cousin, Tom, her cousin, yeah, with Amaretta, a nice suit. Yeah. Yeah, and nice he suit. feels, you you could see it makes him feel really good because this is right after hearing about Gloria Trillo committing suicide. And as soon as Carmela's cousin leaves, Tony just is depressed again. Like he yeah. tries to do something nice, but it still doesn't, it's like still not enough. He always needs to do more. Yeah. What a crazy thing to tackle in a show in like 2000. This was probably like two or something like that. Yeah, I mean, this show deals, this episode dealt with, like, suicide heavily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it was on the nose. Yeah. Dude, I that's a great scene when Carmela is talking to Tony about the woman who killed herself. Because she yeah. doesn't know that they had an affair. Right. So she's like, you know, they're in bed, and she's like, oh, you know what I heard today? She's like, remember that nice woman that gave me a ride back from the Mercedes dealership? And then she was like, yeah. she killed herself. And Tony is laying, facing the other way, and he's silent. And Carmela goes, huh, Mr. Empathy over here. But like, it's yeah. cool because he's actually like, he's depressed. Yeah, he's, he's like, grieving. Yeah, you see his face. Yeah, you see his face. He's like, wait, what? Yeah. Because he immediately, and we learn this later from Doctor him talking to Dr. Melfi, that he feels the guilt. He thinks it's his fault that he she killed himself. herself. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, I know. I was going to say, do you guys think, do you, should, should Tony blame himself? I mean, we saw what the fallout mm-hmm. of their relationship No. I guess I get what you mean, but as far as like actual mental health and suicide is concerned, like no. That's, well, no, yeah, of course yeah. not. Of course like, not. You should never, you should never blame yourself for someone else's decision to end their life. 
Right, but yeah, yeah. But I'm just talking about no, absolutely. And in real life, no, no, definitely not. I'm not I'm not yeah. saying that. I'm I'm just saying it. <laughs> no, no. I, I just well like yeah, like I get what you mean, but it, remember Dr. Melfi even says to Tony that she slipped through everyone's grasp. Mm. Her family in the in the in the earlier on in the other season when she is dating Tony and she talks about her sister and her sister doesn't let her around her kids anymore, how she has nothing but failed relationships with men. There's like like she was kind of like a helpless person no matter what. Right. Yeah. Tony didn't help, but No, right. And I guess that is like the whole conflict of this episode, right? Like and we're, we're we already started talking about it. Like Tony is he hurting people or helping people? What is he doing? Ooh. Even if he's trying to do the right thing, that doesn't mean he is doing the right thing. So it's that's true. You feel it in this episode more than anything. Yeah, no, c- completely. And he even gets offended when Artie doesn't come to him to borrow money. Yeah, he's like, he's like, what am I, a toxic person? He's like, you can't come to me to ask for money. <laughs> he says like, that multiple times yeah. in this episode. Yeah, he does actually. You're right. Who was talking about toxic people in 2002? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Soprano was the first toxic male. <laughs> <laughs> there was no toxic masculinity before one. Tony Soprano. I almost had a spit <laughs> take. <just. laughs> oh, that's Which just goes to show, it's just a made-up thing, you guys. It was made up for television. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not TV, it's HBO. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> Um, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> but to- uh, wow, Cody! I was I was about to call Cody. You call him Tony. Cody Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, shirt, no shirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no shirt. Yeah. Just drinking <laughs> willy nilly. <laughs> but no, were you about to say something about Janice? Oh well, I was just gonna say he also does that while he's at dinner with Janice. That's uh, a cool scene when he asked Janice if she ever knew anyone that killed themselves and mm. if she blamed herself, and she was like, "Yeah, I did actually." Yeah. And then, the, yeah, it was the start of the relationship with Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They're just, they're just starting to fan those flames. Yep. I also yeah. thought the, there was a, there's a quick line she says in that scene where she's eating, they're eating something and she's like, she's sucking out the marrow from she the says, bone. I love bone marrow. She's like, oh, yeah. I love marrow. But I took that as Janice just like sucking the life out of everybody. You know, I agree. like she's just I agree. a leech. She's a succubus. She is a leech. Yeah. She's a completely she leeches on her brother. She leeches off Bobby Bacala, who, like, honestly, a week after his wife dies, Janice starts to move in. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And then that whole is that in this season with the lasagna in the in yeah. the freezer? She yeah, makes him throw it season. away or eat it. No, yeah. eat the last she, she, one. She makes him eat it eventually. Yeah. Eat it. <laughs> I feel so bad for Bobby all the time. Like he just has. I a, know Bobby's such a sweet character, <laughs> right? Sweetie pie, which is cool. It go, it goes to show the acting because uh, Stephen Trippa is not like that at all. <laughs> no, he really isn't. Yeah, you're right. It's almost the reverse. It's like how like like James Gandolfini wasn't anything like Tony Soprano. It's like Stephen Trippa is almost more like Tony in his real life than he is like Bobby in his. <laughs> That's hilarious. There was something. Oh, Anthony earlier was talking about the soundtrack, and I just want to say, uh, I know we hate him, but um, AJ playing D'Angelo for his <laughs> girl. <laughs> 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 Dude, that was so good. I was like, I was like, you know what? Maybe AJ isn't that bad. Yeah, Dude, he wanted to <laughs> smash. Yeah, dude. <laughs> How does that was a whole conflict for AJ this episode. He needed to awesome, smash. Dude. Uh, Paul Dano, aka the Riddler, yes! up in this episode. Yes! Yes! The Riddler, dude. <laughs> <laughs> on his way driving uh, to the girl's mansion in that one scene, he's uh, he should have just been asking riddles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Riddle me this: How do you unzip the, or undo a girl's bra? Or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But the funny thing about his character is that he was acting like he got a lot of pussy, and he's just like. He just that clearly, Paul Dano, you know he wasn't. Come on, yeah, yeah. There ain't no way pa- pa- Polly D is smashing. Polly D. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Dano is the original Polly D. Yeah, he <laughs> is, man. The re- the real <laughs> Jersey Shore. <laughs> and if only they got the actor that plays AJ to be Bruce Wayne in the Batman. They could have oh. used the flashback oh. scenes. They're in they're in big fancy houses. Yeah. You know, like it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I always like that, that like AJ is humbled by his girlfriend's wealth. Yeah. Yeah. After growing up, what he thinks is, you know, pretty rich. Yeah. yeah. And, he see, and, and then he sees it. 
Not only that, but he sees it like this is what legitimate money got his girlfriend and his dad has to do all these crimes just to have the life they're having. Yeah. yeah. At the very end of the episode, Paul Dano's character says to him, hey, AJ, how come, how come your dad doesn't have that Don Corleone money? Yeah. And AJ's just like, I don't know. I don't know. And then it ends. Yeah. What's the song that plays at the end? It's a good song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I kept listening God. to it and now I forgot what it was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's too fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. AJ had a cool little, little, little B story going on here. Dude. Yeah. It was. It was honestly one of the best AJ stories. The best AJ stories are when he's horny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also love like how out of touch him and his girlfriend are when they're driving to the South Bronx. Yeah. And then his girlfriend's like, I think they're just overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. They're poor and minorities. <laughs> it, re- it reminded me a bit of the scene that we talked about in university when they see the homeless woman on the streets yeah. of New York City. Just like a different take on it. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, we can't, we can't, hold on. We have to stay on the soundtrack for one more minute because okay, in this okay, episode, right. Weezer fucking made it on the Soprano soundtrack. Where in the, what part? When, uh, and so when Carmela and Adriana are in the gym, Island in the Sun by Weezer's play. Oh, <laughs> oh you're right. Dude, I loved that scene. Right? That was a cool scene too. Uh, maybe just because they're both so fucking hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are, dude. I think, I think Edie Falco is so hot when she plays Carmela Soprano. Yeah. Like hard, I don't hard. think Carmela's that hot, but in this season what? is when like she really I, I, I think, think she's hot. I, I would smash Carmela. No question. Yeah, no Ooh, question. no question. Interesting. Anthony, no, I, I think you're having <laughs> trouble because you're Italian and the whole mother thing it bothers you. It might that might no, seriously, that might come into play in, in my mind. Like for she's nothing like my mom at all. Maybe no, like no, the I'm way she she's talks, like your mom, but, but I think because <laughs> of the the matriarchal you know thing that like Italian culture is, it's hard for you to look at MILFs like that. <laughs> Anthony's anti milf yeah. anti milf yeah. <laughs> but only for horny purposes, yeah. not for he, he respects milfs. Yeah, if any milfs are listening, <laughs> I respect you. All right, it makes sense. <laughs> everyone knows our audience is like eighty percent milfs. Uh, steady milfs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every Thursday, the milfs are like, "Time to see what our boys are up to this week." <laughs> <laughs> They're in Whole Foods with their AirPods in, listening to us. <laughs> we should just make sure it's Comics and Chron- Chronic number one podcast for MILFs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, is there a scene with Carmela wearing headphones by any chance? We could totally be like, like what are you listening to? It's like Comics and Chronic. <laughs> <laughs> or just going back to that gym scene that's a cool scene because they mention another woman who's talking about furio and adriana says oh yeah she says it looks like his ponytail is like a dick coming out of his head and then carmela says oh she's so two-faced that one and then like adriana feels like self-conscious because she's you know she's already like snitching for the fbi yeah oh yeah that's what's happening already yeah, yeah. that's why she yeah. gives, gives that look when carmela says that she's so two-faced and Adriana like feel self conscious about it. Yeah, and then um, yeah, because Aid is uh, you snitch ass bitch. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> hey, she's got stomach issues. Leave her alone. Yeah, she's IBS because of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't notice this, but Emily uh, noticed this when we were watching. Like, it's in that scene, and it's in a bunch of scenes. There's a lot of mirrors in this episode. Yeah. A lot of there's just a lot of mirrors in a lot of scenes. Like either Tony's looking in a mirror, in that scene they're both in the gym looking in the mirror. I think dream sequence. Yeah. Ooh, let's talk about that. That's a good dream. That's a good dream one. It was a great dream sequence. (laughs) Well put, Jake. (laughs) (laughs) It was a dream one. Yeah. It's fucking creepy. Did you also notice in the dream? The, the noises that are being made. Yeah, the squelching. Oh, yeah. yeah, like like squishy yeah. squelching. Even though all she's doing is like mixing Beasting. something, but it's like, yeah, but it's like just really like, ugh. yeah, it was, it was gross. It was gross sounding. Yeah. And then I love when he like, he looks up and the paint chips from the ceiling are falling into his drink. Yeah. yeah. Like that dude, it was fucking like it was, almost like snow. 
Yeah, yeah, like snow, but it's like it hinted that like from where she hung herself. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, she she hung herself from a she, chandelier. She hung herself it. from a chandelier, and so it was like pulling on the the paint. Oh, yeah. Damn. And that yeah. dream sequence, like you're not sure at first. It, you're like that's the thing with a lot of the dream sequences. You're not really sure. Like it, it seems like at first it could be a flashback of some sort. Yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah. But he's holding a bottle of the shit that Artie Buko was trying to sell. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good, good catch. I didn't see That's that. That's the only thing that, yeah, that makes, it's that detail that while I'm watching the uh, scene, I'm like, wait a minute, something's off. And then, you know, of cool. course, she's covering her neck, so. Yeah. That That's so creepy when she, like, sits on his lap and she's like, you want to see, like, this? It points to her pussy. And then she's like, or, you want to see this? Yeah. And she, like, starts to, like, slowly unravel and then he wakes up all scared. Yep. Yeah. Because you know what's going to, oh, man. Yeah. Damn. It's fucked up. Trillo. R.I.P. She was cool, but she was yeah, crazy. She, she's a compelling character, yeah. She is, yeah. She's she's like easily the most compelling Gumar of his. Yep. Is she? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah, because he doesn't, he has other relations. Like, well, we also get, I don't know her name, the one he's always with. She, her name starts with an I. It's like the Elena. Russian. Or, yeah. Like Ivanka or Ivana. Or something. Yeah, something like that. Where she. Ivana, Ivanka Trump. Yeah, she'll like <laughs> call the house sometimes and Carmela will pick up and. Well, that happens at the, the end of this season. Yeah, yeah she's so I guess who, that's crazy too. But but Gloria Trillo as a character is just like they fall in. It's really like heated their 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 romance. Like they're yeah. like into each other hardcore. But Tony knows like she's something's a bit off. Like she's very clingy, but also just like she needs Tony to herself. And well, you, I don't know if you guys remember like the episode where he does call it off with her. They're fighting, and then he goes. She, Tony looks at her. He goes, like, "I'm not." just meeting you i've i've known you my whole life you're my mom and then gloria goes oh great now the mother comparisons and he's like tony like he's having an epiphany right there and he's like holy shit like you're a black fucking hole of a human like <sighs> nothing will satisfy you and then he leaves and she's like i'll call your wife I'll, I'll call your kids and then tony like locks the door and fucking like body slams her if you watch that episode you literally undertaker style like choke slam her on the ground doesn't she also throw a stake at his head? She throws a stake at him, and he's starting to choke her. And she's like, "Kill me, kill me!" And then oh, that's when yeah. Tony's. That's when Tony stops, and she's like, "Fuck!" Insane. Yeah, she was insano in the membrano. <laughs> 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 oh, Jake's just talking about <laughs> full on assault and <laughs> insano in the membrano. I mean, I feel like if you if you threaten Tony Soprano, you should. Be aware of the repercussions of threatening that kind of a guy comes with. You know what I mean? Like, you can't threaten a gangster and expect there to be no consequence, especially not the head of the New Jersey Mafia. Well, th it's not a threat, but think about the scene or remember the scene when he's talking to Melfi and he's like right in her face and she's Ooh. terrified. This is again, we see this he's happen like, You're a lot. scaring me. Yeah. Yeah. And he, yeah, man, he that, shows up hammered. Yeah, yeah that was hammered. the time where I thought he was going to do something. I was like, whoa, fuck, Tony. Like, you're getting. Wasn't this like further along? Wasn't this when they kind of like nerfed Melfi for a little while? Like, she <laughs> what? wasn't. They never nerfed, nerfed Melfi. <laughs> what? She can beat Superman on a one on one. Yeah, no like, what do you mean? I'm just saying, like, like, <laughs> like, like they put power a levels weren't what they were in <laughs> season one and two. <laughs> 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 Dude, can, we, can you make a picture of Dr. Melfi and like have like a video game with all her stats? <laughs> Defense, offense, and health. <laughs> Intelligence. They, had to, they nerfed Melfi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying like her story became infinitely less compelling and she was way less in the show. Is this around when that was happening? I can't remember. No, I, I don't remember in, either. I think she's in season four a good amount, as, as much as she's in any season. Yeah, I think as the series goes on, though, Dr. Melfi ta does take a back seat. Like, especially in the next couple seasons, she's well, barely definitely there. Definitely season six. She yeah. takes a huge back seat. Mm -hmm. Huge. But that's also like she comes to the realization that she can't help Tony. Yeah, she kind of gives up on Tony. And that's a big part of what she, happens she, to Tony. Yeah, like he starts she, like, to deteriorate she, more. Yeah, she reads that study that talk therapy only helps a sociopath hone their skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She like calls it quits with him. But yeah, I like when Tony comes in wasted and he's like, how you doing? And Melfi's like, I'm doing good, you know. And Tony goes, everything's all hunky-dory. And he's like, how's Gloria Trillo? She's still hanging around there. And then like, Dude. yeah. Then he just... 
flies off the yeah, handle. Flies, he's like, you fucking knew. And like gets in her face. Yeah, dude, it was insane. Yeah, dude, Tony's a big guy to like be charging you, you know? Yeah, <laughs> but Dr. Oh. Melfi fucking stands her ground. And by the end of that scene, like she's in control and like has oh, yeah. Tony thinking about everything. Yeah. She even says, because to- Tony is like, Tony says, uh, she did it because of me, didn't she? And Dr. Melfi says, why are you always so quick to blame yourself? Yeah. She gives it to yeah. him when she says that. She gives that it. Was, she's, yeah. she's, a, she's calling him a narcissist. She's like, dude, not everything revolves around you. Her life yeah. is fucked long bush. She was my patient long before you ever came into the picture. Yeah. So, yeah. I love when uh, we should talk about the French dude giving, or oh, giving yeah. the French guy the money. Qu'est-ce off, que c'est? Yeah, because to say, uh, answer machine don't work. <laughs> I love when he's like trying to tough talk in the mirror. Yep, that's one of the best scenes of this entire episode to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Already such a loser, but I kind of root for him all the time, even though you know, you do see 20 steps ahead. When he says to Tony, uh, you saw 20 steps ahead, and Tony gets so pissed when Artie says that, Tony man. Tony gets pissed because he's right. Yeah, yeah, right. I thought, I do think Tony knew that. Like, how could you not? Like, you're watching it. You're like, Tony has to know this dude is not going to pay him back. Well, not going to because he doesn't want to, but he's not going to be able to. Right, because he's just a loser. Yeah. Just, well, not, yeah, I mean, he's just not a gangster. He doesn't have the gangster mindset. And so when he goes to Tony, he's like, oh, you know, I missed the first payment. And he goes, you know, like, Artie, you got to get your hands on the situation. He's like, a guy starts telling you that, he doesn't have the money. You know, you start looking weak. Artie's not a criminal in the slightest. He doesn't know this, right. this world. Which is like why the coolest part is after that French dude beats the shit out of him when you just hear the knock on the door and he answers and it's just Furio standing Furio, there. Yep, <laughs> yeah. yep. And you're like, you're like, oh yeah, they're going to get that money one yep. way or another. <laughs> they do not need to show you anything. They yeah. just need to show you Furio's face. That's all you need to see to know that, like, this dude's about to get clapped on. <laughs> Dude, yeah, Furio's a. I wouldn't fuck with Furio. Furio's cool because he like loves Carmela, you know. He's yeah. so he's, he's so soft with her, and she's clueless to what he is as a person. Like she doesn't know what he does. She knows if he runs with Tony, she he's knows a, he's a she's a he's a gangster. Like what are you talking about? Carmela's not naive. Yeah, she knows exactly what everybody it does and is. Yeah, I mean her cousin's Christopher. You think she doesn't? She knows Christopher. A junkie and a criminal, and no, true, true, true. But like we've seen Furio do monstrous things, is what I'm saying. Like she doesn't know that he's gonna go to like a massage parlor and GTA the fuck out of it, you know? (laughs) 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 He does GTA the fuck out of that massage parlor. (laughs) That's some total Grand Theft Auto shit right there, dude. He does. What I mean is like, dude, Furio is all those things, and he's still low key kind of a better human than Tony. Oh yeah. He's got a much higher moral compass. Yeah. There's a part where Tony and Fear are driving and Tony's mad at Carmela. And t- Tony says, you know, I know she's my wife, but she can be real cunt sometimes. And you see Furio's face. He's like angry that he called her a cunt because he like loves her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's so the I, thing. I think, I don't know if Furio feels that way for everyone. I just think Fur- Furio definitely know, is in love with Carmela. No, yeah. He's in love with Carmela. I'm not saying he's like, because well, he doesn't do it, but remember, maybe it's the next season when Furio and Tony are pissing at near you know, the almost near puts the him in the helicopter blade. Yeah, the helicopter blade. Yeah, and you yeah. see, well, I kind of, I mean, of course, that's not how the show ends. But man, that would have been some crazy shit if he did that. That would have been an insane twist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he contemplates it though, for sure. Yep. Dude, that might be cool. one of the most, even though he does nothing, just the fact that he thought about doing it is badass in itself. Yeah, super badass. Dude, we should do like Sopranos what ifs. Ooh, <laughs> like, uh, what if Furio became the head of the family? Yeah. Nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could do all these alternative timelines with the Sopranos. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking like, and no one's going to like this. Whoever hears this idea is going to be like, that's dumb. But uh, J- but Jake, me and you were talking about like, what if they had to continue the Sopranos after it's over? And I, f- I really feel like Meadow should be the person in charge because she's around. She's the smartest. But like, why would she run that would the mafia? That never, ever happen. But then I was re-listening to the episode we did and, and we re-watched it. The episode when Tony goes to Italy with Annalisa. What if Annalisa found Meadow and she kind of taught her her ways. Yeah. <laughs> Trains her like Ross Al Ghul yes, and Batman. Like Ghul, oh yes. 
guys. That is insanity. <laughs> There's a what if for you. <laughs> uh, I like that. I like that. What if Meadow takes over the family? <laughs> she could do it. Oh, man. Who do you think? Okay. What? Let's go to that. We'll save that for the last episode. Why? Well, no. What were you going to say? It does take over the family? No, I was just going to say, who do you think should take over? Oh, okay. Yeah, family? maybe. At the end of the series. Well, Polly, Polly's the only one really left. No, and, it's and not his true. Kid. Patsy. Oh, Patsy's left. Patsy's left, and Patsy's son is still engaged to Meadow. Mm. The only ones who survive are Patsy, Polly, and whatever younger, lesser crew members there are. Yeah, Silvio ends up dying, doesn't he? he he's in a coma, so you don't know. It's implied uh, yeah. that he's probably never going to get out of the coma. Mm. At the very least, the top earners are gone. <laughs> Polly was never a top earner, right? They kind of. It's kind of they don't stress it, but a lot of times Paulie isn't living up to what Tony wants. Yeah, that's true. He's a captain, so he's high ranking, but he's he doesn't make the most money out of all of them. And and even when when Tony tries to get Polly to take on more responsibility, he says Polly, no. Polly yeah. declines. Yeah, I was actually maybe this is jumping around a lot, but and it has nothing to do with anything specific. But I was watching a video about. Are ghost real in Sopranos? <laughs> Ooh. And it was kind of interesting because I don't think they are, but the moment when Polly and we talked about this, where Polly is at the the psychic, but the way he he kind of gives the psychic information, like the psychic never actually says, like, and then when you rewatch the scene, it makes sense. It's like he mentions a name and then Polly gives him more information, and then he's like, "Yeah, what do you know about him?" And then like it's it's like no, but at then first the guy, guy says. He says, he asks, does it still itch? And he would never know that about the poison ivy. You know what I mean? Oh, right. And then, so they were saying in this video, not my idea, but that, you know, if you have, if you, if you had poison ivy, it might still be, you know, it might still be visible on Polly. You know, he was close to him and it might've been what I, it was dumb, but I just thought it was interesting that you can make a whole video about whether or not ghosts exist in the Sopranos universe. I think they do exist and there's more evidence to back it up, but I'll, I'll tell you what. Yeah, of one course. of them is actually, and I didn't know. I literally didn't notice this until last year when I was rewatching Sopranos at Livia's wake when they're in Tony's house. There's a part where Furio is talking to Paulie and Silvio, and he's like, "He's like, I, I think they should do the show a Survivor and be like, survive this and stick a gun like he does like a gun thing." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you see Tony open the liquor cabinet. And he opens it, and there's a reflection of Big Pussy. Pussy, it's like, yeah. It's, it's like two seconds long, and that's it. And then he closes it. And then, so yeah, then there's also the part, mm. there's another part where Livia's already dead now, and AJ's in the house alone, and he like looks down the hallway, and he's like, Grandma? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and it then, could just be any sound in the house, but it's exactly. right after her funeral. Yeah. And then there's another part, it's after Bobby's wife dies, when Janice is trying, when AJ is trying to scare the kids. With the Ouija board. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I think ghosts might be real in the Sopranos universe. Yo. <laughs> That's crazy. Brr, brr. <laughs> <laughs> think about one last one. It's not necessarily a ghost, but when, when Christopher's in a coma, he Ooh. says he, he goes to hell, or I guess he, he has a near, he, near death experience. Yeah. And he says something about three o'clock. He says, Paulie and Tony have to watch out for three o'clock, like it's a time or something. Yeah. But if you go to the last episode and, and and in the very last scene, if you're on team that Tony's dead, he gets whacked. Then the guy that's killing him is coming from the bathroom at his three o'clock. You're right. It would be his three o'clock. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You're you're. I, did I talk about this? I think we talked about it, right? Yeah. I de- I'm, I'm not saying I, I that's not my no, no, theory. I'm not let's theorize, say, you know? But I remember because you said three yeah. o'clock and then I remember the scene. You're right. We're, from where Tony is sitting, the dude coming out the bathroom would be his three o'clock. Exactly. Oh, yep. shit. and we could talk about that last scene in much more detail when we yeah, get yeah, to yeah. that we episode. Get to that because that's yeah. yeah. That took yeah. me a while to embrace that last scene. Oh, I bet. It took me <laughs> a long time to come to terms with it. A hint of things to come. Yeah. Oh, I had a question for you guys because we What's did up? we did the something similar last episode, but we said Justice League to Sopranos. <laughs> okay. What about Avengers to Sopranos? Ooh. Okay. Are we going just? Based off this episode or Sopranos in general? Okay. I will only say for this episode. characters. Yeah, in general. But I want to say for this episode, you could easily say, and maybe for the whole thing, that Christopher is Thor 
because there's one scene in this episode when at the very beginning, when he's talking to Tony and he's like, you know, I have a lot of big things planned for you, Christopher. And Christopher's like really taken aback. He's like, wow, I just only hope I'm worthy. And Tony's like, oh, why wouldn't you be worthy? Yeah. So Christopher's Thor because he's the worthy (laughs) one. I love love in that scene with Tony's like, he's like, you're going to take this family into the 21st century. Christopher's like, we're already in the 21st century. <laughs> He's like, but I'll Tony, do whatever you say. Yeah, I'll, yeah, do yeah. Whatever you say. <laughs> I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> but that's my only evidence that Christopher's Thor. Ooh, I don't know if it, Thor. Uh, I could do yeah. it because Thor, especially in the early iterations, like or in the first movie, you know, he's always drinking a lot. Yeah. Christopher's always drinking, shooting up heroin. <laughs> yeah. The lightning is heroin. It's it's oh, a metaphor. Sh- <laughs> 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 uh, the the okay. needle the needle is Mjolnir. Mjolnir. <laughs> Mjolnir. <laughs> Mjolnir. Yeah, Mjolnir. Or, <laughs> and later the pen for Christopher is Ooh, Mjolnir. That's true. He does become Ooh, yeah. a famous screenwriter. <laughs> right. When he's worthy. Yeah, when he's yeah. worthy. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The cleaver like could look like like me all near. <laughs> yeah. All right. Who would? I think Tony should just be Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specifically, though, Hulk. specifically our favorite Hulk, Joe Fixit Hulk. Joe Fixit, yeah. Right? Definitely he could Joe just Fix-It be that Hulk. gray Hulk with a suit. Like, <laughs> yeah. hey, I'm the Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> who's, 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 who's Artie Buko, though? That's what I want to know. Which Avenger is he? Oh, he's Rick Jones. He's Rick Jones. <laughs> <laughs> who's Rick Jones? He, he's the guy Hulk has to push out of the uh, Bruce Banner pushes out of the way. He's a kid, and that's why he gets hit by the gamma bomb. Yeah, that's why bomb. he gets hit by the gamma bomb. Yeah. Artie's always, you know, he, Tony has to pull him out of the fire every time, especially this episode. So that's Artie true. Buko is that. just Rick Jones. <laughs> oh, God. He could be someone else, but I feel like for this episode, I feel like not enough people know who Rick Jones yeah. is. Yeah, the hardcore commies know who Rick Jones yeah, is. The hardcore. Ones. Okay, so <laughs> pop, pop, pop. Uh, let's have Artie B. I think Vision. Adriana is Black Widow because she plays Adriana's both Black sides. Widow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah perfect. Adriana's yeah. definitely Black Widow. Yes, I feel like Iron Man. Should go <laughs> Polly in an Iron Polly Man suit. <laughs> <Iron Man. laughs> Just because of the <laughs> <laughs> Silvio is definitely Doctor Strange. Who? No, Polly's got to be Doctor Strange. She's got the fucking salt and pepper. That's that would true. be perfect. Yeah, Doctor Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. And Polly also does this a lot, right? So he could be oh, doing yeah, he fucking. Could do, he could use his fingers <laughs> to do spells and whatnot. <laughs> oh. Hey. Actually, if you think about it, if you watch it, like Polly's always doing this, he's always Loki doing the Spider Man thing. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>, Spider Man. <laughs> he's actually all three. Yeah. 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 Spider Man, Iron Man, <laughs> and Doctor yeah. Strange. It's the Polly Walnuts Marvel. Marvel variants. Yes. Yeah. In one universe, he's Spider Man. In one universe, he's Doctor Strange. <laughs> he's also Mr. Fantastic. You know, we got that already. Yeah. <laughs> who, would, who would Carmella be? Ooh, Scarlet Witch. Ooh, okay. Because she's very religious. She reads from the Bible instead of the Dark Hold. Yeah, the Dark Hold. Oh, God. <laughs> Ralph is Wolverine. <laughs> you think yeah! Ralph is Wolverine? Oh, shit. Yep, Ralph That'd is easily hilarious. Wolverine. <laughs> like yeah, that. yeah. Oh, Ralph is a villain. Should he not be a villain Saber from tooth? the universe? <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, Ralph is... <laughs> Ralph has saber tooth. Uncle Junior as Professor X. Oh, yes, yes, Junior as Professor X. Bacala as Bobby Drake, Iceman. Oh, dude, Bacala as Iceman. Dude, when when uh, can you imagine a Sopranos version of the movie Logan when Junior starts getting dementia? (gasps) Oh. Sick. <laughs> Meadow as X23. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Meadow yeah. as X23. Who's AJ? I feel like AJ can't even be on Avengers. I know, right? He's so I just hate him no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> AJ is MCU Scarlet Witch's brother. Um Quicksilver. Oh, Quicksilver. Quicksilver. Yeah. yeah, he just gets killed and riddled. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's awesome. <laughs> do you guys think the French dude intentionally fucked Artie over? Or was it, in fact, business deal gone wrong? No, I say he fucked him over. Here's why. So Ooh. his sister who works at the restaurant, Elodie, she seems very suspicious all the time, especially in that episode. She's, she's buttering Artie up. Even the wife you're, could see it. You're right. So you're you, right, know, right. you know he's waiting for the call. You know he's not getting the call. And you also know, like, the way she's you looking see, at him. She's watching him. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah, that's my she's reason. Like, she's like, hey, how come your brother hasn't answered? And she's like, oh, you know, France, the time zones. Different. Right. She gives such a bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Bad liars. And okay. you could tell, like, Artie's very easy to take advantage of, especially if you're a hot woman. Yeah. So <laughs> she knows True. she's got him hook, line, and sinker. Even I his mean, wife already knows before he makes the decision that he's yeah. fucked. Yeah, Charmaine knows what's up. <laughs> That's why she says the thing about orthodontary, like, or whatever, that their kids need braces. And she's like, yeah. we need to pay for that. <laughs> yeah, Artie's so easy to fucking fool. <laughs> I love Artie though. Yeah. Again, yeah. Still, I love the guy. It's fun to He's see him honestly, fail. He's honestly like know. Tony's last tether. I would say Artie serves more as a tether to humanity for Tony than even Carmela or his kids do. Mm. I would almost agree. And that's kind of sad because Artie doesn't even really like Tony. Like he tries to shoot him. He well, he knows he burned down the restaurant. I disagree. I think Tony. I think Artie actually does love Tony. I think they love each other, and that's why he never shot him, and that's why he continues. I think he's also he's just not that kind of a guy. Mm. And like, but no, he loves, I mean, dude, even like season five, remember Artie moves in with Tony at his mom's house. Tony even comes to him and she's like, Hey, you oh, know, I have yeah. this big empty house. It's just me. And he's like, let's settle our, our beef. And he has already moved in with him. So it's like, yeah, like, I don't know. Right. Like, they are still the neighborhood friends that they started off. As. Yeah. I thought it was really funny line when Artie's in the hospital and this is before, you know, it's before it. it's so <laughs> he, he's in the hospital and Artie's like, oh, thank you for, you know, that $50,000, you know, you're, you, you're forgiven it. And he's like, well, actually with the like, 1.5 50.5 VIG. with the VIG now. Yeah. And you already missed yeah. a payment. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, because Tony at the end of the day, he's still a businessman. He's like, technically it's actually more now. Yeah. So I like how even in, in that moment, if that's where the scene ended, even though he was doing a nice thing, he's got to mention the fact that he's like, it's actually yeah. more of that, but don't worry about it. It's also cool because in that scene, Tony protects his reputation because he's like, let's wipe my tab and call it even. And Artie says, but that's only 6,000. And then he's like, well, we'll assume the guy is dead. And then that's when Artie says, you can always see 20 steps ahead. And that pisses off Tony. And he's like, he like looks around, he grabs his wallet and his watch and everything and takes it. He's like, you got jumped and they beat the shit out of you. So you took a bunch of pills because you were in a lot of pain and you accidentally overdosed. And then yeah. he, like, he says something about like, he can't have it get out knowing that Tony lent someone 50,000 and the dude got away with it. Right. Because yeah. otherwise Tony would be perceived as weak. And then that's when it cuts to Furio knocking on <laughs> his door. Yeah, because he was like, we, uh, yeah, dude, that was such a cool scene. Yeah. I kind of wish we could have seen I know, Furio. Right, right, right. <laughs> we, 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 we did see Furio, especially because that dude like kind of beat the shit out of Artie. Yeah. yeah. And he's yeah. like, I see you next time I kill you. I'm going to kill you, yeah. <laughs> That's why you can't trust the French, man. If you loan a French guy money, he's not giving it back. Yeah, that money's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is why us Italians, you know, we don't have good <laughs> relations with the French. <laughs> don't worry, we have 0% listeners in France. We can say whatever the fuck yeah, we want. We can say <laughs> <the French. laughs> at, least, at least Mussolini didn't let Hitler walk right in Italy and occupy it. You know what I'm saying? Whoa! <laughs> hey, yo, hey. I'm just saying. I'm just speaking historical facts, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no defense for that. That is what Italy did. So far. Yeah, but, no, uh, but Mussolini also like. I mean, yeah, he was a dictator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, at least he didn't let someone take over his country. Yeah, we haven't let fascism take yeah, over Cody, America. You yet. fascist sympathizer. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. I never <laughs> I never heard you say you weren't. Ooh. I just did. <laughs> I didn't hear it though. <laughs> too little too late. <laughs> yeah. I'm ignoring it. I'm pretending I didn't hear it. Yeah. Fascist. No, this is good. <laughs> 
No, yeah, this is a, this is a good episode. I like this. I like the, I like the episodes because it's such a the show is so Tony centric. Yeah, I do like the episodes where you get to focus on other characters and like their relation to Tony. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because this episode, while he wasn't in it, felt like you got a much deeper understanding of Tony throughout the episode. Yeah, yeah, you see like a different aspect of his humanity through like. Artie Bucco's relationship with him. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a that's always the sign of a good show where you're learning about another character just from a different character. Like yeah. that's not even in the scene. Like you guys are saying, like Sopranos is David Chase, man. And the uh, and the right other writers of the show. I'm really not sure. I know one Terrence of the guys from Tim Van yeah. Patten. Yeah. Those are those are the main three. It was mostly David Chase, Terrence Winter, and Tim Van Patten. I was watching a couple interviews with David Chase, and I was surprised because he actually reminds me of Christopher, like the way he talks and the way he talks about his life. I mean, his sure, personality sure. seems like I, I bet he based Christopher a lot on him, you know, right? Like I always thought it might have been Tony, but then even thinking about Christopher, it's like, oh, yeah, he's a Hollywood screenwriter. Like this is probably the yeah. most David Chase like character because David Chase is an interesting dude. And you did say that you, you saw an interview and David Chase said he didn't have a good relationship with his mom, right? Right. He, his mom wasn't straight up Livia Soprano, but he based Livia Soprano off of his mom. But I mean, even in the show, Christopher's mom is like an alcoholic and a bad Yeah. Mom. No, there's probably a lot of that. But the way David Chase was also talking about his mom, he's like, she was actually hilarious. And mm. the way Livia Soprano acts is hilarious. Like, she there's is funny. Like, she's she's some good zingers. Funny, like, yeah. She's like, mean, you're not, which is funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you're just glad she's not sending the zingers at you. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> such a great character. Yeah. But there's, so there's one more line in this episode, and then I guess maybe we should uh, call this, call this episode, but it's towards the end, and, and Tony is, they're eating dinner. It's, to, they're about to go to the Billy Joel concert. They're at the nice restaurant. Yeah. Scenes from an Italian restaurant. That's where they use it perfectly. You yeah. know, like, they're Bottle using of red. Scene. Yeah, yeah, it, that, yeah, but see, they don't use everybody hurts. So that's why it doesn't yeah. make sense. But so in that scene, Tony's talking about, I guess, either Carmela's father or someone where when they were dating, when they were dating, he was he was told, if you have a great wife, you're a millionaire. And it's a really sweet line. And you you believe it coming from Tony. He does love yeah. Carmela, but he's he's just very complicated, dude. And yeah. the next scene is that scene we already talked about where where AJ's chilling with his friend Paul Dano. And Paul Dano's character asked AJ, he says, why doesn't your dad have that Don Corleone money? And AJ says, I don't know. But to me, when you put those scenes together, it makes it seem like Tony, at the end of the day, as fucked up as he is, he still goes back to like his family and what that means to him. And like him having Carmela really does ground him, despite her being an enabler. Like she still keeps him, already keeps him as a human, but Carmela's still there for now. Because at yeah. the end of this season, well, she's done with that motherfucker. <laughs> There's even a scene. I, I don't know what season it is. It might be this season or season five. No, I think it's this season, actually, because it does happen before they break up. But Tony, he's talking to Melfi, and he he says something implying that, oh, you know, like, I'll leave Carmela. And Melfi laughs, and she goes, you'll never leave Carmela. And he goes, why not? And she's like, she might leave you, but you'll never leave Carmela. And it's like, mm. like she understands like Tony's psychology better than he does. It's like, you're not going to leave the one stable person who's built a life, given you kids. You know what I mean? Who puts up with all your shit? Like, you yeah, know, like, Ugh, such a good show. <laughs> such a good show. Good writing. What are we giving this? How many Joe Pesci's are we giving this episode? You guys easy six, six. We'll give it a six. This is strong. I, I, I love Artie Bucco. I actually do think he's one of the best characters. That's not of the main Central cast. Although you might argue that Artie is actually one of the main characters. Because like the show goes to show that Tony's top, and then it goes like Carmela, Christopher, and then you can kind of pick. And then it's kind of like Aid, Polly, Sill. Yeah, Janice. everyone gets their time to shine. Yeah, yeah, everyone does get their time to shine. And this, yeah, this is a cool Artie time to shine. I, but I would put uh I would put Artie up there with like Aid. I agree. Maybe even like right below, but you know what I mean? He's like he's like one of the only characters that makes it through the entire show. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's true. A guy would. I would hope that he would not die. He's so innocent. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm. I'm just saying, like, even like he, like he's not. He didn't come. He was there from the f- very beginning until the very end. They didn't even like. They like he was always in the background at the very least. Yeah. 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 yeah is sure. is 
Is there a reason you picked this specific episode, Jake? Uh, honestly, because of the fact that it, it it didn't focus mostly on Tony, that it focused on like auxiliary characters such as Artie and whatnot. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I like that I think, about like, it. The Sopranos is so strong, and James Gandolfini carries the fuck out of it. Yeah. And so I like picking like Legend of Tennessee Maldosanti, which focuses so much on Christopher. The other one, which focuses so much on Ralph, like this show does a good job of like a showing that James Gandolfini is the main character, but that like the whole ensemble shines through David Chase's writing. Yeah. hundred percent. Like there's just like, yes. Really, yeah. <laughs> there <it is>. <laughs> <laughs> Cody said his definitive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he charged that. Yes. up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I picked it because it's a it's a really good Artie episode. Nice, and I'm assuming yeah. would you guys give the season a six as well? Season four, I love season four. Honestly, this is also the yeah. season where Ralph dies. Yep. Yeah, that was brutal. Yeah, that's a good episode. So we meet yeah. Pio Mai, you meet Tony's Pio horse. Mai. Yeah, even though uh, yeah, technically Ralph's horse, but Tony's right. horse really. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, also, this season's season finale when he's trying to. Not buy the house by the ocean with that dude. Oh, white in white caps, yeah. White caps, dude. That's a great episode because he intimidates that dude into giving his money back by just playing loud music on the lake. The on, the yeah, <laughs> on the Stugats, yeah. On the Stugats, yeah. <laughs> he plays Dean Martin. Yeah, he plays Dean Martin. He goes, You fucking Goomba trash. Yeah. And then, and then he's like, I'm gonna call the cops. And his wife's like, Why? He'll just keep paying the Coast Guard fee every time they come around. Give him his money back, Alan. And she like loses her shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a fucking badass scene. It's I just love how like Tony can either deal with you in like a typical thug fashion, like beat you up, murder you, or when he wants to, he can like use creative like psychological shit to fuck with you. Yeah, like play within the boundaries of what's lawful. Yeah, exactly. Or what he, he can, can play within the boundaries of law, but he's like, oh, word, I'm just gonna like tweak it this much. Like we talked about it before, but the way he punishes Bobby for beating him up, he's like, oh, I'm not gonna kill you, but I'm gonna have you kill someone else. Yeah, knowing that's gonna fuck with you, like. What better way to punish someone, you know? So is any so is no one in the pun well uh, well in the Punisher well. Is <laughs> the no Punisher. one in the Sopranos the Punisher? Like is anybody just straight up Frank Castle? Ooh. I feel like Furio. they're all Furio, yeah, Furio would make a good closest. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Furio's the closest to being the you Punisher. You send him to do the dirtiest dirty work you need. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fear's definitely the punish. He's also definitely like the man without fear because that dude will go into any situation solo dolo by himself. Yeah. The man without fear. <laughs> Furio, the man without fear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Definitely give the season a six. Definitely give him this episode a six. Yeah. And that wraps up this episode of Soprano Summer. Yeah. Wow, we're halfway through it, guys. Damn, that's crazy. Well, shit. Tune in next week. As we talk season five. Episode 12. Oh, episode 12. Long-term parking. Yep. Yeah. Nice. I admit season five, it was hard to choose to choose an episode. Why is that? So I don't know. Because almost like, <laughs> I mean, I guess you could say this about any season, but only, almost every episode is good in season five. Oh, okay. And also has That's like not Steve good, yeah. Buscemi, but like, it was just hard. Like, oh, fuck, which one do I... Re- S- same thing that I like, like, like I want to do every episode, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. It's just... No, it's just, I mean... I don't know about you guys, but I think if this does really well, we'll probably want to just talk about other random Sopranos episodes yeah, eventually. Yeah, we, or we could do a C- Sopranos summer season two Ooh. and just cover a different episode yeah. every season. You know, it would be cool is if like now you guys pick because I picked the yeah. one, so maybe, oh, maybe one yeah, season yeah, Cody yeah. picks, one season you pick. You know what I mean? That would nice. be cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, you guys. This is Comics and Chronic, Soprano Summer. We hope you enjoyed. If you want, go follow us on TikTok, Instagram, uh, Reddit. No, no we're, we're not on Reddit. <laughs> Craigslist. Twitter. We're on Twitter. <laughs> Craigslist. Follow us to our homes. Yeah, backpages.com. We're starting a new <laughs> we're starting a new backpages Pornhub page. <laughs> Oh, we do. We do. We never really upload to it, but we have a YouTube channel. If you guys want more YouTube stuff, (laughs) if you do, though, let us know. We'll try to put more YouTube stuff up, but it doesn't seem like anyone cares. So, like, if you guys want videos, let us know. Why don't you people care? You don't care about us? Yeah, what the hell? (laughs) We're family. No, no, we're family. (laughs) No, we're not. You fucking knew. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Peace out, guys. 
Hi, you're listening to Comics and Chronic, and I'm Jacob H. I'm Cody Cannon. And I'm Anthony Iannaccio. And you can tune in every Thursday to hear new episodes of Comics and Chronic. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Comics and Chronic. That's Comics, the letter N, Chronic. We'll see you guys next week. Woo! Peace.